Okay, so in this video, we are going to prove by induction that the sum of the natural numbers from 1 to n, uh, square, the squares of the natural numbers from 1 to n, sorry, is equal to 1 sixth n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Okay, so step one. Prove true for n equals 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the left-hand side of this equation and then show that that is true. Uh, that gets us to the same value as if we substitute to the right-hand side. So look at the left-hand side. I've got this summation of r squared from r is 1 and n is now 1. So this is just substituting you 1. So I get 1 squared and so I get 1. The right-hand side is 1 sixth times 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So 2 lots of 1 plus 1. So we get 1 sixth times 1 times 2 times 3. So 1 sixth times 2 times 3, which is 1. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and so it is proved for n equals 1. It works for n equals 1. Right, number two. Assume true for n equals k. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace the n in the formula with k. So I get the sum of r squared from r is 1 up to k is 1 sixth k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1. Right, step three. So, uh, step three, uh, assuming true for n equals k, prove true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, so this is what we want to do next. So, um, let me write it down here. So we've got the summation of r squared from r is 1 up to k plus 1. Okay. Now, using our summation knowledge here, what we can do is we can split that summation apart. We've got here the sum from r is 1 up to k. Okay, so this goes from r is 1 up to k, and then there's also another term, the k plus 1 term. So we substitute the k plus 1 into the r squared, so k plus 1 squared, and we get this. Now, we know that if uh, true for n equals k, then we have that this is this. So I can replace this summation with this right-hand side. So we've got 1 sixth k, k plus 1, 2 k plus 1, and then I've got this k plus 1 squared on the end. Now our target here, what is our target? Well, what we want to do here is that we have these two terms. We want to combine them and factorise them in such a way that what we end up with is precisely the same as substituting any n for k plus 1 in this. So what I want to target and get is 1 sixth k plus 1, k plus 1 plus 1, so k plus 2, and then two lots of k plus 1 plus 1, so that would be uh, 2k plus 3. Okay, That's what I want to arrive at. So I want to factorise this. Now I can see that I've got a common factor of k plus 1 in both terms. So I can factor that out. That can come out the front. So I've got k plus 1, and then I've got this 1 sixth k, 2k plus 1 that's left there, the 1 sixth k and the 2k plus 1, and I've got a k plus 1 that is left as well. Okay? Now the thing is, I know that I want to get that 1 sixth as well. I want that 1 sixth to be out the front. So in order to bring the 1 sixth out, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply everything inside this bracket by 6. And I'll show you why. I'm going to get the k 2k plus 1 plus 6k plus 6. Because now if I factor that out again, oh sorry, I multiplied it out, I've got the 1 sixth times that gets me this term. 1 sixth times the 6k gets me that term. 1 6 times that 6 gets me that term. Okay, so I can put it back and it will be exactly the same. 
So if I expand what's inside this bracket, because there's not much more I can do with it, I'm going to get 2k squared. I've got a k there, plus 6k, so 7k plus 6. So I want to factorise that. Right, so definitely have a 2k and a k, aren't I? Okay, um, so if I had, um, well, uh, a k plus 2 and a plus 3, I'm going to get the 4k and a 3k, so 7k, 2 lots of 3 is 6. Yes, okay. And that is precisely what I described up here. If I substituted the n for k plus 1 into that, I get precisely that. So that is precisely what I was looking for. Now the concluding statement. OK, can we remember what it was? Right, so as true for n equals 1, OK, and if true for n equals k, then true for n equals k plus 1. then true for all n greater than or equal to 1, where n here is a natural number. So that would be my concluding statement. I have proved it here. I proved it was true for n equals 1. I assumed it was true for n equals k. And then I proved that it was true for n equals k plus 1, if true for n equals k. And so I could write in that concluding statement. And I have proved that this is true. Uh, by induction.